We are still in chapter 7 and we are learning about the Northern American civilizations. And recently we learned about the ancient Pueblo. And in here we discussed about the Mesa Verde and uh, the Pueblo Bonito. And these are the areas in modern day Colorado, Utah and New Mexico. And uh, for the most part, we talked about how the ancient dwellers of these cliffs uh, were able to adapt to the arid environment of the desert and were able to not only survive, but to thrive. This time, we will learn about the peoples of the Great Plains. Go ahead, have your textbooks ready or log in to our website at LODAUSD. And uh, from here, launch Clever and from Clever, Sengage Learning on the left side and log in with your student account and password. And uh, from the left side, it's Unit 3, Chapter 7. And we are in Section 2. And in Section 2, we are doing Lesson 3. This chapter's essential question is, in what ways do civilizations adapt to the environments in which they live? And the objective of this lesson is to explore cultures that lived on North America's expansive plains. Peoples of the Great Plains relied on hunting rather than farming for survival and made homes out of grass and earth. So this lesson describes several Great Plains cultures. Well, what is the Great Plains? Um, it is a wide area of flat, windswept grasslands that stretches north from present-day Texas to Canada. So early tribes settled along the region's major rivers and established permanent villages. So to survive this bitter winter, some tribes built earth lodges out of soil and grasses to house whole families. They relied mostly on hunting, gathering, and fishing because, well, farming was not easy on the dry grasslands of the plains. The different tribes of the Great Plains each had their own spiritual beliefs and uh, traditions. So many homes have had altars for burning incense during prayers. It is like a lot of those uh, Buddhist uh, religious ceremonies. And uh, farming communities practice religious ceremonies centered on a good harvest. Another important spiritual practice for the Great Plains people was the sun dance. And the sun dance was an annual ceremony of drumming, dancing, singing, and praying for harmony among people, and giving thanks for prosperity, a bountiful harvest. Okay, now let's go to the second part of this lesson. We'll learn about the, the important animal in the Great Plains, which is actually the, the icon, the symbol of the Great Plains. We'll talk about the buffalo and the buffalo hunters. This animal was central to the livelihood and culture of the Great Plains people. And... Uh, Large herds graze on the wide open grasslands and nomadic tribes follow their migrations. And these tribes had no horses, so they traveled on foot. Um, because the buffalo uh, are more aggressive than cattle, they will attack if provoked. So hunting buffalo was a risky business. Um, hunters agitated the herd um, into the tundras stampede. And then they drove the buffalo over the cliffs um, or into corals where they kill the animals with arrows or spears. Buffalo were useful resource. Great Plains people ate buffalo, you know, meat raw, and sometimes they roast them or as jerky. So they use buffalo skins for clothes and tents and bones for tools, sinew or tendons for bowstrings and boiled hooves. Uh, for glue and even buffalo dung for fuel. So pretty much they use every single part of the animal. So in the 1500s, the Spanish introduced horses to uh, North America and some Great Plains people began to use them to hunt. So horses allowed the tribes to follow the buffalo migration across the Great Plains. As hunting became more efficient, more tribes moved to the plains and became buffalo hunters. And in 1800s, white settlers also hunted the buffalo, resulting in its near extinction. Let's take a look at the picture of this buffalo. So before 1500s, about 50 million buffalo roamed freely on the plains. 
By 1889, commercial hunting uh, with horses and guns had reduced buffalo numbers to just 1,000, from 50 million to just about 1,000. So the question is, how might this overhunting had have affected tribes of the Great Plains? Well, I'm not sure if you've seen a buffalo in person, but these animals are really, you know, fascinating creatures. These are like majestic animals. And uh, for many native, you know, inhabitants of the Great Plains, these are not just animals. These are like spiritual beings and they really revere them. Okay, now let's go to the review and assess questions. For number one, reading check. Why were buffalo important to the people of the Great Plains? Now, that this is a very straightforward, simple question. Number two, analyze cause and effect. How did the introduction of the horse to North America affect life of, you know, for tribes of the Great Plains? Hint, it has something to do with hunting. Number three, compare and contrast. How were the religious practices of Great Plains tribes similar? How did they differ? Now go ahead, uh, go to our Google Classroom and put your answers to those questions to our review NSS assignment, the slide. And it's in number three. Don't forget to fill up the, the name, last name, first name, class period, date, and our key vocab is Plains. And uh, again, if you want to get the full credit, correct answers, using your own words and incomplete sentences. Okay, so that is chapter seven, section 2.3, Peoples of the Great Plains.